Now let's look at some of the headlines here in the in the Trump stack because it's it's recent history repeating itself. How many times in the course of this campaign since Trump has announced have the drive-by media and the Republican establishment believed that they had him? I can't count the number of times Trump has said something or done something that the media and the Republican Party have salivated. That's it, they say. That's it. He just stepped in it. No recovery from this. And yet, he just keeps climbing. And he's continuing to climb in the polls, and that's what this stack is basically about. From the Hill.com, Republican fears that uh, Republican fears Trump's Muslim comments could hurt Donald Trump's rhetoric since the Paris terrorist attacks appear to have helped him with GOP primary voters, according to most polls. However, Republican insiders are concerned that his words could come back to haunt the party as it seeks to appeal to a broader audience. This is stunning. Can I read that headline to you again? Donald Trump's rhetoric since the Paris terrorist attacks appears to have helped him with GOP primary voters, which is what this is all about right now. We are in the middle of the GOP primary. This is where soon the Hawkeye Hawkeye and New Hampshire primary will happen The first votes will be cast on the way to selecting the Republican nominee. Fine. Despite the fact that Trump's rhetoric is helping him with Republican primary voters, which ought to send a message to Republican leaders about how to do this. They instead are telling people like the Hill and Politico, they are leaking that they are concerned that Trump's words could come back to haunt the party as it seeks to appeal to a broader audience, not realizing that that's what Trump is achieving, is the broader audience. Have you taken a look at Trump's demographics, the demographics of his group voters? We looked at this last week. One of the biggest blocks of support Trump is getting is from blue collar voters. Now, those are traditionally thought of as union workers, hourly wage workers, Democrats, blue collar. I think there's a new definition we need to attach here to blue collar, and that is taxpayers. But the Republican base is never, ever described as blue collar. And yet here's Trump. You talk about broadening the base. Appealing to a broader audience, that is what Trump is doing. And the Republican establishment is wringing its hands, worried silly over this. In recent days, Trump has suggested the U.S. could have no choice but to close mosques. Even more controversially, he told an NBC News reporter he would certainly implement a system to register and track mo- No, he didn't. I'm not going to spend a lot of time again refuting this because I spent the first hour on Friday refuting this. But this story is out. It's not working. I knew it was. was, It's backfiring on the media. These attempts to impugn Trump by lying about what he says and by lying about what he thinks, which is no different than what they've done about every other Republican. It's backfiring on them. These efforts to harm Trump are not succeeding. His poll numbers are up. The energy behind his support is up. He's drawing huge crowds. Is anybody else drawing big crowds out there? Have you seen anybody else? Is anybody is anybody out there as often as Trump is? I mean, there's no mystery to why this is happening. Trump is out there all the time, and he's good at this, and he's obviously enjoying it, and he's having fun, and the media is distrusted. There's a poll out today. 63% of the people in this country blame the media for an overall negative attitude about America and its future. And Trump, whether he's trying to or not, is playing into that and bouncing right off of it. So all of these efforts, these traditional media tricks of taking people out of context or saying, accusing them of saying something they didn't say, which is what's happening in this case. 
this is the great service that Trump is is uh, performing here. It's a point that I made yesterday. He's demonstrating you don't have to be afraid of the media if you're a Republican. And you don't have to be afraid to violate political correctness. You don't have to fear being aggressive. You don't have to fear disagreeing with the president or with the Democrat Party or with the media. You can triumph doing so. That's a great service he's performing. One of the reasons I was so excited about his entry into the race early on, I was hoping it would inspire similar courage throughout the Republican field. And it may yet, because the best efforts of the media to take Trump out are going to fail as they are continuing to fail now. And the reason is they didn't make him. It's, I know, it's redundant saying this, folks, but it happens to be true. The media can't take you out if they, if they didn't make you. But if you let the media make you, if you let the media be responsible for your being popular or well-known or liked or whatever, they can change that on a dime. But if all that is because it's real and you've engendered it yourself because of a connection you have with people, they can't break that bond. And they're going to spend the rest of this campaign trying to, to prove to themselves they can. And as they try to break this bond that Trump has with his voters, they're going to make fools of themselves even more and more as they are now doing. He did not tell an NBC News reporter he would implement a system to register and track Muslims. He was talking about the border and how he would build a fence and I would keep them out. Now, the Hill says he was unclear whether he is referring to new immigrants or all Muslims on Americans. He was referring to Hispanics and others coming across the southern border. He wasn't even talking about ISIS or Muslim in that. that, that that's how bastardized this whole report is.